Okay. When Ken says that, when Ken said that he was uh, scratching for a program for today, I uh, thought I'd, I'd uh, offer to let you folks see the other end of contacts that I know you have made many times with uh, YT5A in the DX contests. It just happened that, yeah, go ahead. Um, Linda and I had been looking forward to attending the IARU Region 1 conference in Serbia uh, for six years. Uh, it was scheduled to be held in Novi Sad, uh, which is the second city in Serbia. It's uh, just an hour west, northwest of uh, Belgrade. Um, and it happens that Novi Sad is Linda's favorite city of all time. So, uh, uh, you know, she and I have been to Serbia half a dozen times, not always together. Um, and COVID happened. So the uh, conference was made virtual in 2023, which was when we were expecting to be there. Uh, I'm sorry, in 2020. Sorry, I'm getting, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, and in between then and 2023, the hotel in Novi Sad changed hands and it wasn't available any longer. And so the SRS, the uh, uh, Serbian Radio Society, uh, decided to host it in Zlatibor, which is a kind of an alpine-like um, uh, uh, sport village, I guess I would say, uh, which is uh, down in the uh, in kind of west central uh, Serbia, very close to the border with Bosnia, by the way. Um, so uh, two of our friends from Novi Sad, uh, Stephen YU3AA and Vera YU3MAY is why Vera, by the way, is the better of the two CW operators. Um, uh, they uh, came down to, to hang out and uh, to drive us back up so we could spend a couple of days in London's favorite city. Um, while we were in Zlatibor, Hrane YT1AD showed up and said, Dave, you must stop. You must stop. You know, spend the week with me in, in uh, the town of Watts. Alex, am I uh, pronouncing that correctly? Which one? The town of Watts. The town of Watts, probably. The town of Watts, yeah. It's uh, just, just outside of uh, Kraljevo. Uh, anyway, uh, you don't say no to Hrani, but I got him to uh, agree that we would just stop to have lunch. Um, and at the tail end, we also stopped at a club station in Novi Sad, which I'll, I'll show you guys. Go ahead. Okay, when you fly into Belgrade, you fly into Nikola Tesla Airport. <laughs> and uh, this is, Nikola Tesla, of course, is pretty well known among our kind of people. Um, it's interesting because both the Serbs and the Croats claim him. The Croats, because he was born in what is now Croatia, and the Serbs, because he was unquestionably a Serb. So uh, you will find that the Nine Alphas sponsor Nikola Tesla events, and the Serbs sponsor Nikola <laughs> Tesla events. OK, um, go ahead. Um, so this is just the official photo for the conference. Uh, um, region 1, uh, there were about 110 people there, including uh, proxies. There were 59 countries represented. Uh, in person, uh, there were uh, some newcomers to the group from Saudi Arabia, from Bahrain, from uh, Iraq. Uh, and uh, it was a really nice group. Uh, we spent four days conferencing. Go ahead. Um, there was not a lot of overlap between the IARU folks and contesters. However, you probably recognize this guy in the middle, uh, Razzo, uh, uh Echo 7 and 7 Delta X-ray, or E7DX in contests. 
Uh, he was actually there um, as part of the Austrian delegation because he lives in Vienna where he's OE1 EMS. And so he was hanging out with uh, some of the other Balkan boys uh, in, the, uh, in the lobby during the conference. A couple of other calls there that you would recognize, uh, Ash, uh, KFI, EYY from uh, Tunisia, was the Tunisian delegate and a few others. Okay. <laughs> um, so it turns out that Google Maps knows the location of YT1AD. <laughs> uh, and it is, it's, it's right there in, uh, right in central uh, Serbia. I had actually been there uh, previously in 2002. Um, Rane and I and a couple of others uh, uh, had gone to Sarajevo to, uh, it, it was a trip connected with what eventually became the change from Tango 9 to Echo 7. That's the prefix for, uh, for Bosnia. That's a long story that I won't go into today. Um, but uh, after that uh, stop, we had gone to his contest location in 2002, and I got to operate with five other guys in the WAE phone contest which is quite a different experience from the European end than from our end. Um, it was a different experience for me because of the other five guys, three of them were smokers. Mm -hmm. And I managed to lose my voice uh, by, uh, uh, by late Saturday. So I was croaking, uh, uh, and it sounded like I was croaking uh, on 10 meters the following morning, uh, following morning stateside time. Anyway, um, it uh, was more or less on the way between uh, it's a lot of Boron Novi sides, so it wasn't too much of an inconvenience for uh, for our friends from Novi side who are old friends of Ronnie's from back before they were even married. So, so where is Latibor on that map? Uh, okay, Latibor is, I can get the button here. Uh, Right about right in there. Uh, when Linda and I had actually been to Zlatibor before in 2005, and we got there by driving up from uh, for us for three alpha in uh, in uh, Montenegro in uh, Herzegovina, and we drove up through uh, Bosnia and then across, and then just nipped over the line to well uh, to get to a amateur radio direction finding event that was held in 2005. Okay. The uh if you read uh, Cyrillic <laughs> uh, and if you can uh, see the screen the uh left uh street sign is uh, for the street named for uh, Mihailo Pupin. Uh, Michael Pupin, as, as he's known in this country, uh, he is a, a Serb who uh, taught at uh, Columbia University back uh, in the early 20th century. And he's a really interesting individual because he learned, uh, he studied under Heinrich Hertz and he taught. Um, Howard Armstrong. Is this the name of Cooper Coins? Yes, exactly. Uh, uh, he made his money uh, by patenting a coil that made it possible uh, for long distance telephone service to exist. And uh, so uh, he ended up having a very large estate in Norfolk, Connecticut, Northwestern Connecticut. Uh, and uh, anyway, the, the Serbs revere him, and so the street is named for him. So our radio clubs, including the uh, Michael Koopman Memorial Radio Club, W1BCD, which is licensed at my location, was Mario is 56 today as the trustee, um, and because his home club in Pranjavo 
Serbia was YU7 BCD. The signpost on the right is Ulitsa Radio Am Radio Amaterska. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so Prani Station is at the uh, the junction of these two streets. <laughs> now, when I was there in 2002, this was essentially the station. This was uh, 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 you know big towers. Um, the antennas are a little different than they were then. Um, the just to give you an idea of the scale, this on the left-hand tower that's a three-element eighty-meter beam, and this one over here is a four-element forty-meter beam. And for the other bands, they're six-element Yagis yeah, pointed in different directions uh, or on rotators. Um, we'll, we'll take a closer look at this a little later. Um, so anyway, that was the station more or less in 2002. Go ahead. Okay, here's a, a little closer view of the uh, you know, 40 meters on the right and 80 on the left. And we'll take an even closer look at these side arms um, because I've never seen anything like it anywhere else. Go ahead. Um, wow. This will give you an idea. These, you know, five element Yagis uh, um, on on side arms, you know, fixed in different directions. Um, most contest stations in Europe try to have three antennas for each band. Um, one fixed on North America, which from Serbia happens also to cover all of Western Europe. One fixed on uh, Japan, and the third uh, either rotating or pointed south or whatever. Um, and this is how uh, Frane has uh, solved that problem uh, on uh, some beams. Okay. Um, inside the station, you guys have all seen pictures of K1LZ with these neatly arranged uh, operating positions and K3LR and uh, and all. Um, well, Ron is a little, it, it looks, all, this was, of course, right after the uh, uh, CQ phone contest. So it was uh, a little bit um, disorganized, but you'll see more explanation of how they do it later. Um, anyway, this was uh, the, uh, one of the operating positions. Go ahead. Um, I, I said the station's gotten a little bigger since 2002. Um, it actually, at this point, uh, comprises three houses. Uh, they're all within the 500 meter diameter circle. Uh, this is the 10 meter house. And uh, the 10 meter antenna is uh, you know one big rotary and then four uh, antennas fixed in different directions, so you can you know just uh, not have to use the rotator very much. Um, I didn't think to take a picture of the inside of this uh, shack, um, but when I was in there, uh, Ronnie uh, told me that his favorite radio. Uh, which we're always, always interested in hearing who uh, people's favorite radio is. His favorite radio is a TS-890. Mm -hmm. So for what it's worth, um, that uh, that's that's okay. straight from from Mr. Milosevic. <laughs> um, What's that? Is a silver or something game? Um, gosh, there could be. I didn't. So this was, yeah, I guess it is. I guess there is a silver there. Um, they, these are also, of course, used for uh, in-band uh, uh, operating as well, and that's all you know connected by Wi-Fi. Okay. Okay. Um, so then this is house number three, and house number three has the the uh, requisite three element eighty, 80 meter beam and four element forty meter beam. And the 160 meter vertical is right there. And uh, 
you know, a bunch of other antennas so they can do uh, in-band uh, uh, operating. Uh, we did not get in this house, and I'll, I think the next picture shows why. Go ahead. Uh, here's Ronnie himself. For the first time, you're seeing an actual human being other than uh, Linda and me. Um, and the reason we didn't get in the house was uh, this guy uh, over here in the lower left. Um, uh, he's very friendly to Franny, but not so much to anybody else. So we stayed on the uh, on the street side of the uh, fence because we were uh, at that point getting late for lunch and we couldn't couldn't uh, do that. Okay, so. Some of you may recognize the fellow standing in the middle of this picture. He's there. Chris Berger is at s 6 ez Chris happened, just happened, he and his wife, his wife on the left, happened to be passing through. They're not married. Okay, well, his partner, whatever. Um, they've been Margaret together a long time. Um, yeah, here. Yeah. Yes, I, I don't cry. I had dinner with them a month ago. Okay, so... Uh, no wonder you recognize. It took yeah. me a couple of seconds yeah, this is. to spot him. Uh, Chris used to be very active. He was a de expeditioner to ZS9Z and a bunch of other places. Uh, he hasn't been very active recently, but he's doing DXFC, uh, trying to uh, put his feet in 100 countries. And so uh, he has flown into Greece, the gun, North Macedonia and Serbia. They were heading next to Bosnia, uh, to Montenegro, to well, Albania, maybe to Kosovo, although he had the good sense not to mention it to his serfs. <laughs> um, and uh, so, well, uh, you know, there we all are. And why U3AA is there and why U3MAY is there. And of course, there's chronics. Yes, Stephen was, uh, he was YZ7AA back when the Yankee Zulu prefix also belonged to uh, Yugoslavia. Okay. Um, so this is just to prove that we made it to Novi Sad. That's the Danube in the background. Um, so we don't need to linger there. Okay. Um, now, they took me to the same. I said, uh, yeah, it's his favorite uh, seafood restaurant across the river. Um, so uh, the radio club in Novi Sad is YU7BPQ. Um, it is a long uh, established radio club. They are on the top floor of a building in downtown Novi Sad, which happens also to have a nightclub on the top floor, the same building, uh, which uh, uh, created some, some interesting stares from the young people who were getting on the elevator as we were getting off. Um, anyway, uh, this is the uh, YU7 BPQ club station. Of course, being downtown, noise is a big problem. And uh, they had just added this FPDX 101 MP to the uh, uh, to the club, um, and this worked all continents awards hiding over there on the wall dates to the 1950s. Uh, uh, why it was why one BPQ originally before now, I won't go into the uh, history of call signs in, in, in uh, Yugoslavia. Go ahead. So this is uh, some of the club members. This was actually our third visit that Linda and I have. Uh, been able to make to uh, to the radio club, so we're treated like uh, like uh, long lost uh, cousins. Uh, you can see that uh, the club has been pretty successful uh, in past years. That that that's not even half of the awards they have hanging on the wall. Probably the best known uh, graduate of uh, the club is Goran YT Seven AW. Uh, Goran is uh, one of two people who has been uh, documented as copying Morse characters uh, at a thousand characters per minute. 
Uh, <laughs> the other being uh, Fabina, uh, who's now DJ 5CW. Anyway, Goran is, uh, he's in Sweden now, but uh, um, it's, uh, it's uh, one of their uh, favorite songs. So as you can see, the, whenever you're in the Balkans, the, uh, the rakia is going to come out as the first thing. Okay. And there will always be something to eat. And rakia is a high octane um, plum or quince or some other fruit brandy, uh, mostly homemade. homemade. And uh, yeah. it's kosher. Uh, it is. I, I didn't know that. But uh, that's good to know. For, uh, <laughs> it's pure fun. So, um, okay. So next, um, of course, being uh, greeted like uh, long lost cousins, uh, they had to give us uh, t uh, polo shirts from the club. So we had to do a quick change. And, uh, Actually, the uh, scarf she's wearing is a polo design. She's wild about anything designed by Ralph Lauren. Ah. So if you ever want to give her give give her give her something by Ralph Lauren. Okay, well that's good to know. <laughs> so uh, anyway, YT five A. This is uh, uh, from the CW weekend, which of course was just last weekend. Um, with all of that hardware, they end up being uh, number three in Europe. Uh, very respectable showing, um, but uh, the competition in, among multi multis there is pretty fierce, and so uh, this is how the flame sports shape up. Shape out. We need craniums. Um, well, that's uh, it depends. That's um, uh, uh. Yes, those are Russian soul science, of course. Um, so um, that's that's it, um, I think. Yeah. Um, I guess I, I just want to say, since we've got a couple, couple of minutes, um, uh, I just want to say a little bit more about clubs in the former Yugoslavia because it's really why ham radio is so strong today in the Balkans. Um, back in the, uh, uh, the uh, Tito era, uh, radio clubs had a lot of government support. And it was because uh, the, they were building uh, uh, technical and operating expertise uh, was a part of the civil defense organization. Uh, and uh, if your club did well competitively, you got more money. And in uh, some cases, a lot more money. So uh, that uh, that model, uh, of course, the, the government support is no longer there, uh, but uh, the tradition of a strong radio club doing training, um, particularly of, uh, of young people that's still, still there. And uh, guys like Frane uh, uh, do continue to provide a lot of uh, financial support to, uh, uh, to that activity. Great. So anyway, that's, that's it. I mean, I, I could talk forever about ham radio and the former Yugoslavia. So just one question: the, the area around Brown is VHS. You not much else in the population. Uh, not much. What other houses on population? Um, he's up on. Uh, you can actually go on uh, on Google Maps yeah, and, and look. Um, no, it's uh, it, it's uh, it's kind of a plateau, um, out, just outside of the the village, um, and uh, you go down to. The Yes, you go down quite a bit to the village, uh, which is on, I guess it's on the river. Um, and uh, the mountains, any any significant hills are far enough away that they're not a factor on HF. Um, so uh, it's a good, quiet location. I mean, you when you call YT5A, they'll generally hear you. Um, 
and uh, it's um, <clears throat> I, I I always find it's fun to see what's going on at the at the other end of the of the contact. So next time you work YT five A, that's what that's where these signals uh, emanating from. Any other questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.